Hey, there's Pete with GCI Turf. I hope you're having a great day, and look right here. We're back here at the new worldwide GCI Turf headquarters. We're going to do it all out of a 32-foot building, right? <laughs> well, I'm just messing with you. But I did get me a new building, and uh, I'm gonna, I got some cool things planned for this in the future. Be a lot of wintertime talks going on in here, and and uh, man, it's hot as fire. Good gosh, I wish the humidity would go away. The heat doesn't bother me, it's that stupid humidity. But we'll, we'll talk about this later, uh, this building. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna kind of set it up. Uh, if, if I were a DIY homeowner, I'm gonna set this building up according to that. And of course, I'll probably have a little bit different equipment in it than you might have. But, uh, I'm gonna show you how I organize it. We'll do that later, but for now, I got a good, cool little three series video thing I'm gonna do. One is going to be on slit seating, one's gonna be on dethatching, one's gonna be on core aeration. It's gonna be three different videos, a little series. This little clip right here is gonna be at the beginning of every one of them, so I can tell you about all of them, and I'll link them up in the description as I post them. So let's get with it. All right, so the, these are two that we use in our business. Uh, this is this is a billy goat. It, this is a reciprocating aerator, okay? Now let's talk about plug-in versus aeration. There, it's no different. It's just a word, the, the same, the, two different words are used for the same thing. You might hear somebody say core aeration or aerating and seating or plugging and seating. To me, it's all the exact same thing. These tines right here penetrate the ground, these hollow tines, and remove a core of dirt, leaving a little hole in the ground. And essentially that's going to allow water to penetrate deep quicker into the soil, oxygen will get into the soil quicker that way. Also allows for a little seed. When you do your seeding in conjunction with this, the little seed gets down in there and it helps uh, you know, create a little place for it to come up. Now really, I only know of two different uh, styles of core aeration machines. One is gonna be a reciprocating, which that's what this is. This, this machine runs on a camshaft. All right, so you can see the camshaft right here in this. This cam turns on the pulley system. The pulley system's turned by the engine, the uh, crankshaft on the motor. And these tines go up and down on their own. Straight, kind of straight. Well, they're kind of angled backwards a little bit. That actually helps propel the machine forward somewhat. Uh, let's fire this up and see what it looks like. So you can kind of see how that works right there. The camshaft propel the tines in the ground. And you've got this lever right here that you're gonna let, you're gonna push forward and watch the tines. See how they drop down? That's what engages the tines into the ground. So of course, it's not gonna do any plugging unless you flip that lever up. All right, so let's look at this thing in action now. Uh, I'm gonna do it in bare dirt and I'm gonna do it in a, in a pretty thick stand of turf right here, just so you get an idea of what it looks like both ways. Now, of course, if, if I were actually plugging and seeding this, I would probably have this cut down around three inches or three and a half, roughly. Uh, the reason I cut it a little bit closer than my typical cut is because I need two or three weeks from the time I put my seed down until I need to start mowing again, okay? Because I'm gonna be watering aggressively. I want that grass seed to come up, give it a little extra time. That's, that's why I cut it just a touch shorter. But you can see here, here's what your plugs look like. It's just gonna remove that portion of the ground 
And of course, when it rains and water, that just kind of disintegrates and goes back in there. And uh, now those are not very big, deep cores. We're back dry again. It's amazing when you get 10 inches of rain in a week and it turns hot, it doesn't take long for it to get dry again. But if your yard is soft, moist, your cores may be a little bit bigger than that. Let's go look at it in bare dirt. You can see right here all your little holes, your little cores that it puts out and removes the cores. Look at all those holes in the ground. I think there's a standard of maybe, I think it's eight aeration holes per square foot. I think, don't quote me on that, but I think that's right. I'm not sure. Uh, they can, the machines, you can only put the tines so close together. Okay, that's kind of the way that works. But you can see how it, opens up the ground several different ways. I'm gonna hold this real still because I'm gonna screenshot this and use this for my thumbnail. I think that'd be a pretty cool one. All right, now here's the second type of uh, core aeration machine. Now you can see this one's a little bit different. This one is on a, a shaft that goes around and around. So as the machine goes forward, the tines roll and typically the weight of the machine is what drives the uh, tines into the ground. This particular version is, is the Stinger version. Has a sulky, you stand on it and you can ride it or you can remove it and walk behind it. But you would simply take this lever, drop it down, and you can see how that, that makes the that engages the tines. It, it, it lets the tines ride on the ground. So uh, let's let's run this one in the yard and then go do it on some bare dirt. All right. So you can see your cores here, and uh, again, the the moisture level in the ground is going to dictate how well these machines work. Typically. You want a little bit better core than that. Maybe two, maybe three inches. Two inches, two to three, somewhere in there. And, uh, but it didn't do bad. No, not much difference than the other one. The reciprocating. Uh, if the ground had more moisture in it, obviously we get a better result. If your ground is hard from lack of rain, you might want to water before doing this. All right, so the reason I've got some bare dirt over here to work with is this is my neighbor's where we're doing the, the uh, renovation for her. You can see here's your holes again, here, here, here. Uh, of course, if you got bare dirt, you want to go over the same area three or four times to really pound the ground, to really chop up the dirt and mix it up well. Um, Matter of fact, let me do that so I can show you. All right, so that was several passes and you can see now what it's done to the ground. It's kind of loosened it up much better. That's more of what you want versus a single pass like you see here. So you still got good hard spots in between the holes. So in a dirt situation, bare dirt situation, you want to loosen that ground up a little bit more. So hey, I hope that was helpful. I hope that kind of helped you understand a little bit more about core aeration or aeration or plugging or whatever you want to call it. Doesn't matter to me. Uh, of course, these models come in, or you can get pluggers or aerators in models that you actually stand on and ride them. Uh, hydraulic machine, Z-plug or X-Mark or Toro. They all make one and many other companies. So I uh, uh, hope that helps. Great machines, I use them a lot in the fall. Uh, get your plugger right.